to say earlier when I alluded to this passage. If one is going to take three days and three nights in the heart of the earth and uh, insist upon absolute literalism, are we talking about uh, 72 hours? Now, what are we talking about? Three days and three nights. Or are we talking about an approximation of time, as I mentioned? Uh, when I report to people that I see along the way, they'll say, where have you been? I said, in Lawrence, Kansas. How long you were there? How long were you there? I was there two days. Well, I have not been in Lawrence and will not be in Lawrence 48 hours. The writers of the New Testament were writing for a variety of different audiences who counted time differently. And if you will look at the computation of time with reference to the death of Jesus in John's Gospel, with, in comparison to the computation of time with reference to the death of Jesus in the synoptics, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you will find a difference. A difference simply in the way they described time. For, as Mr. Didot has said, the Jews. The day begins at sundown and moves on. The Romans did not think that way. And so you find some writers dealing in Roman time. You find other writers dealing in more of what you would think of as Semitic or Hebraic time. And the difference there is a very understandable thing. It's a question of reporting. If any of you who are Americans have been in the military, and I said to you, now, what time is it? You would report it's 2200. And others of you would think, what in the world is he saying? Why, it's 10 o'clock. The same time, different descriptions. This would be Mr. Didat's last question. Mr. Didat, in the book of Re Revelation, Jesus claims that I am the first and the last. And also he said, I am Alpha and Omega, and the beginning and the end. If Christ was not God, how could he make such a claim? The book of Revelation, scholars will tell you, was a dream of John. It was a dream which he has put down on paper. These are what people here, if at all, that if Jesus appeared to him, to John, and told him, I'm Alpha and Omega, if he did, which I do not believe, they're talking about God Almighty, that God is saying, I'm Alpha and Omega. I am the first and the last, not Jesus. But suppose you put these words into the mouth of Jesus, according to your translations. Even then, a dream. You know, a people, when they eat a bit too much, it happens you dream dreams, things that you see. And you read this book of Revelation describing to you certain beasts with eyes outside and eyes inside and, you know, something which absolutely you have eaten too much, you start thinking in those terms. So I said, now, while Jesus walked this earth, we have to now understand that while he walked this earth, in none of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John is the expression ever used, I am God or worship me. On the contrary, he says, my father is greater than I. He says, my father is greater than all. He says, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous because I seek not my own will, but the will of him that sent me. He says, of that day knoweth no man, no, not the angels, nor the son, but the father in heaven. In my knowledge, I'm not like God. In my power, I'm not like God. He so all power is given unto me. It is not mine. I, by the finger of God, cast out devils. I, by the Spirit of God, do these things. Where does he say that he is doing the works? That it is his power, he is doing it. Nowhere. And Peter testified in the quotation that uh, the doctor gave. Peter, in the book of Acts, testifies. He says, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you. A man, not God, approved among you. A man. He quoted it, but of course, the quotation went off such like water and ducks back. You people hardly apprehended anything. He says, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him. 
He didn't do it. Which God did by him in the midst of you, which you also know. I said, look, we agree with that. The Quran testifies to that effect that he gave life to the dead by God's permission. He healed those blind and the lepers by God's permission. We agree with that. But I said, look, now your interpretation, your reading, you are reading into your own scripture something that is not there and which is contrary to what Jesus claimed. He's teaching us, he's come, I'll teach you how to pray. It's a prayer like this. So, oh, our Father which art in heaven, our Father, yours and mine, including Judas, not the Father of Jesus Christ in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, singular, thy name, thy will be done, thy... As, as, in, as it is on earth, as it is in heaven, where does he say I'm God? Where does he say worship me? Nowhere. Nowhere. It is something now, like I just heard on TV, the program of Brother Jimmy Swaggart. Uh, he's giving some lessons on TV. And at the end of that lesson on Babylon, one of his panel members, he says, you know, I've been to Mongolia. I've just been to Mongolia. And there, he said, I went to a Buddhist temple. And there, the supervisor, while he was with me, I'm asking him that this wheel, prayer wheel, on which you people are pinning in your prayers, in written form, and you turn the wheel, what for? He says, no, this is now, we are asking in this form, asking Buddha for help. But he said, look, I read so many books on Buddha, nowhere does Buddha claim to be God. Nowhere. This is one of our panel members of Jimmy Swaggart says, no one says that, Jesus, that Buddha is God. He says, nowhere. He says, yes, that is true, but we say he is God. We make him God. This is the same. What he is talking, laughing at the Buddhists, I said, my brother, you are in the same boat. You are doing the very same thing. Brothers and sisters, I want you to acknowledge really these two fine champions, two wonderful gentlemen for sharing their valuable time and the energies with us tonight. However you want to acknowledge them. Thank you very much. Ashhadu an la 